नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू व्हाट डज दिस डेटा से वंस अगेन आई एम अजय प्रकाश आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टूडेज प्रोग्राम बाय शोइंग यू अ सेट ऑफ ग्राफ्स एंड इफ आफ्टर सीइंग दीज ग्राफ्स एनीवन स्टिल फील्स दैट मोदी एंड हिज टीम इज डूइंग अ ग्रेट जॉब इन इंडिया ऑन द इकोनॉमिक फ्रंट देन ऑल आई कैन से इज ऑल द बेस्ट एंड मे गॉड बी विद यू द फर्स्ट ग्राफ ऑन द लेफ्ट शोस हाउ द rupee is faring against the us dollar and this has been in the news all along you must be aware of it today when i am doing this episode it's trading at 81 rupees 64 paise just not so long ago in january the rupee was around 73 74 rupees so in the last 6 7 months it has depreciated by over 10% which only mean that all our imports have become that much costlier the second graph on the right which you are seeing is the india inflation rate for the last 12 month now the government has had a problem of re- retaining the inflation within 4 or 5% from december last year the inflation started going up and peaked in may when it crossed 7.5% closer to 8% it looked like the inflation is coming down but again in august this year it has crossed 7% so the two takeaways is that our imports are getting expensive our petroleum products are costing us more even if the crude prices are going down we are still paying more because the rupee is depreciating on the domestic front the prices seem to be going up all over the place you can experience this when every time you go to the supermarket you will find that the essential commodities are going up the next graph on the left you see is the india wholesale price index probably the only parameter you might cheer about if you really want to do so but then wholesale prices in our country are seasonal and have a lot to do with how the monsoon fares it had peaked in the month of uh, june when it had crossed 16% it is now down to little over 12% if that is any consolation the fourth graph on the right is the india industrial production index it had peaked in the month of may when it was close to 20 however last month there has been a huge fall it is now down to 2.4 in the month of july so the wholesale price index is hovering around 12% which is not a good sign and the industrial index has fallen sharply and if this is not enough our trade deficit is at a all time peak we have crossed 30 billion dollars in july the normal trade deficit for india used to be below 10 billion dollars on a monthly basis it was even positive in the month of june 2020 however in the last 3 months it has been widening very sharply and probably this is also one of the reasons why our foreign exchange reserves are at a all time low and the last graph i am showing you on the right is the india unemployment rate now though the modi government hates to acknowledge that there is any unemployment in the country but in august 2022 the unemployment rate is on a all time high at 8.3% now in the backdrop of all this if someone comes and tells you let's celebrate because there has been a record gst collection how would you feel and this is what exactly our finance minister ms Nir- nirmala sitaraman seems to be telling all of us she pops up whenever she is asked to do so and in one of her appearances in january this year she happily tweeted that we have crossed a gst collection of 1 lakh 40000 crore indicating that there should be a celebration Sorry to interrupt this video. Please stand by for a short message. If you like this video, take a moment and please like and subscribe to this channel. We put in a lot of effort to research data that supports all our episodes. Remember, the news is just an opinion, it's data that counts. Thank you for watching. Now when the economy is looking down, 
and the GST collections are going up, should there be a celebration? In fact, none other than her would be knowing the reality. Let's have a look why the GST collections are going up despite the economy going down. I will now spend a couple of minutes analyzing the GST collections from 2019 onwards. At one end is April 2019 when the GST collection was 1,13,865 crores and at the other end of this graph is August 2022 where the GST collection was 1,43,612. Now, there are some natural peaks in this graph, which I want to get out of the way first. April every year, the GST collections have a natural peak because of the year-end supplies and the GST gets deposited in the month of April. So, these peaks you see are the natural business peaks. The trough here, which you see, is in April 2020 which was the pandemic uh, first lockdown period and the businesses had come almost to a standstill. The figure which I am showing you here is 1,10,818, which was the highest GST collection in the month of January 2020, just before the pandemic. The thing to note here is, that the GST had started falling post January 2020, not in March. So the effect of the pandemic could be felt much earlier. Now, if you do away with the troughs and peaks, and I put a trend line, the white line shown here is the trend of the GST collection with a dip around the pandemic year. And thereafter, gradually, the GST collections have been going up. Surprising fact is that when the economy was not doing well in 21 and 22, the GST kept rising. Remember 2019 was an election year and Modi ji got elected for the second term. Even after he came to power in the month of May, the GST collections kept going down till the mid of the year. Now, here I have superimposed the period of the lockdown one when the GST collections went down and the second lock lockdown period when again the GST collections went down. As I said, the, the, just before the pandemic started, the maximum GST collection was over 1,10,000 crores. And when did we recover uh, that kind of collection? It took almost 12 months when we reached 1,15,000 crores. So the so-called V-shaped recovery, which is touted by the finance minister, was actually never a V-shaped recovery. It was more like a stretched out W. Then again, the second uh, lockdown came and thereafter in September 21, was actually when we reached the level of January 20. 20, almost one, one and a half years after the pandemic had first struck us. So the Indian industry suffered for almost 18 months and not for two or three months as the government would make us believe. Now to understand why the GST keeps growing, you'll have to first understand the components of the GST. The goods and services tax in India has four major components. First is known as the Central GST or CGST. Second is the State GST. Third is IGST or Integrated GST. And the fourth component, which is lesser known, is the CES on the GST. Integrated GST is applicable on imports done in the country as well as on the interstate trade, which is done in the country. CES is similarly applied on imported goods as well as designated domestic goods. So these four components of the GST, the CGST, the state GST, the integrated GST and the CES is reported by the government on a monthly basis and the figures are available on the Press Information Bureau site as well as the Ministry of Finance site. So here is the graph of these four components for the last 12 months starting September 2021. 
the red line here is the cess which looks like a, almost a flat line however there is a minor increase similarly following the same trend is this blue line which is the cgst and then the white line which is the state gst both of them you would notice that there has been a dip in the collection in the last month and the yellow line here which is shown is the integrated gst this seems to be going up at a much faster rate again the april peaks are to be neglected so if you do a quick calculation to find the compounded average growth rate of the gst over this one year period you will find that the central gst is growing at one and a half percent the state gst is growing at 1.2 percent and the integrated gst is growing at 2.1 percent cess at 1.3 percent the overall gst has been growing at 1.7 percent now a high IHGST means either the interstate trade is going up or our imports are going up. The thing to notice here is that IGST is almost one and a half times to two times the state or the central GST. So the integrated GST is going up at a faster pace. Now let's see whether it's because of domestic interstate trade going up or increase in imports. Here is the graph of the two components of IGST, the imports and the domestic interstate trade. The blue line here is the IGST component on, on the imports, while the yellow line is the IGST component on interstate trade. First thing to notice, IGST is going down in the last one month quite significantly. However, you would notice that the blue line is catching up with the yellow line, which means the imports are going, growing much faster than the interstate trade. So let's see between September 2021 and August 2022 in this 12 month period, how has the contribution of these four components changed? The CGST has gone down by 1%, State GST has gone down by 1%, IGST on imports has gone up by 4%, and IGST on domestic has gone down by 2%. The CES contribution remains the same. So overall, the domestic trade has decreased by 3% during this one year period, whereas the imports have increased by about 4%. So what does this mean? Well, in plain simple term, it means that the domestic trade is slowing down and we are importing more. It doesn't mean we are importing more goods. It means we are importing more in terms of value. The more is the value of the goods, the more IGST and the cess you would pay. The reason for increase in the value of goods which are being imported can be many and I'm not going to go into that today. But you very well know the rupee is falling, so we are going to pay more. And then there is inflation in the, uh, in the countries from where we are importing goods. China is our largest trading partner. The inflation in that country stands at 2.5% today. Second in the list of trading partners is United States of America. The inflation there is 8.5%. And a third place is UAE, where the inflation is 3.5%. I'll close today's episode with one very significant piece of data, which in my opinion should reach the Prime Minister. In August, uh, the Prime Minister attended the Niti Aayog's council meet. Among many other things what he said, one was, that he was very happy the GST collections are consistently crossing 1 lakh crore every month. And then he also asked for collective action to increase the GST from the states. Rather than going in for a discussion on how to increase the trade, he acted like a typical sales manager. Go and increase the GST, I don't care what you do. 
in fact if he has to ask someone to increase the gst collection it has to be the bjp ruled states and i have a reason why i say so have a look at this data look at the gst collected by the state during the last 5 months take an average and divide it by the population of that state you get a figure which is called the per capita gst for that month and this gives a very interesting perspective of the gst on top comes dadra nagar haveli with a per capita gst collection of 7302 the other top performing states remain Sikkim, Goa, Haryana, Delhi, Maharashtra, Chandigarh, Karnataka, Gujarat and Uttarakhand. The next uh, 10 also I have listed in the chart on the, on the right hand side. Now where are the strong BJP states like Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan where BJP has been performing well in the Lok Sabha elections. Madhya Pradesh at 28th position, Uttar Pradesh at 29th, Assam at the 30th and Bihar at bottom of the list at the 36th position. And if I remove the northeastern states and the UTs, the bottom five are given in this chart. The bottom five major states in the country are Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Assam, JNK, and the last is Bihar. Three out of the five are BJP ruled states. JNK is under the central rule for last three years. And Bihar with or without the BJP, Nitish Kumar has been there for last 15 years. What does per capita GST actually signify? Well, it's a measure of productivity, the produce of the state, the business activity in that state, and many other such factors. So if you add up the per capita GST for the BJP ruled states and then find out the contribution they make towards the national collection, here are the results. BJP ruled states contribute only 35% to the total GST collection and all other states contribute 51%, the union territory 9%, and northeastern states 4%, which further means that the BJP ruled states are contributing only one third to the national productivity. So, Modi ji has only to tell Yogi Adityanath or Shivraj Singh Chauhan or Manohar Lal Khattar to buckle up and increase the GST collections. As a matter of caution, I'll suggest that you keep a track of all these economic indicators so that you are well aware of the real situation. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I'll see you again next week with some more data. Till then, Namaskar and goodbye.